About seven months ago, I made this video about HP Electra and HP Data Services Cloud Console, just as they were announced. Now it's time to dig deeper into both. This first video in a mini series of two videos will be all about HP Electra. Stay with me. Hello, my name is Markus Leinonen and I am your enterprise tech enthusiast. Thank you for tuning into my channel. As you might have noticed, I've officially became tech enthusiast. <laughs> and that is how you will know and find me from now on. Before we start with Aletra, I want to thank Hewlett Packard Enterprise for sponsoring this video. From the moment HP Aletra was announced last May, I wanted to get my hands on it and make a video about it, but unfortunately there hasn't been any units anywhere close by. So when HP called and asked me if I would like to fly to Poland and make a video about HP Aletra at HP Warsaw office, they did not have to say much more. Immediately when COVID restrictions allowed, I booked the tickets and off I went. It was a total blast visiting HP Warsaw office and meet all these cool people at HP. By the way, this was my first time in Warsaw and it was a very nice city with lots of stories to tell. Highly recommend it. So let's start with HP Aletra. HP Aletra is the latest and greatest what HP has to offer for your primary storage needs. Standing on the shoulders of their previous generation storage arrays, but better in almost every way. And for the first time for HPE, fully cloud managed. As discussed last time, HP Aletra comes in two versions. First, we have the big brother HP Aletra 9000 that cherishes the strong legacy of HP Primera. Some might even say Aletra 9000 is the next evolution of Primera, but officially it's a brand new storage array. Like Primera, Aletra 9000 has a 100% availability guarantee and is meant for tier 0 mission critical applications. What we are looking at here today though is the smaller version HP Aletra 6000 that has a lot of similarities with HP Nimble Storage. I mean, a lot. <laughs> so from technical and capability point of view, it is an evolution of Nimble Storage and the next chapter in the Nimble Storage story. For example, it has the same 6 nines guarantee, it uses the same famous triple plus parity and it's designed to run tier 1 business critical applications. But everything is faster and cloud managed. So if you like Nimble Storage, this is excellent news for you, you are gonna love this one. So let's take a look at Aletra hardware. So the exact model that we have here is right from the middle of the Aletra 6000 range, HP Aletra 6050. It is 4 rack units in height and like all other Electra 6000 models it comes with a controller node pair in the back. In the front there are 24 drive slots which are fully populated with 7.68TB NVMe SSDs. Switching to the rear view and taking a closer look at one of those two nodes in Electra 6050. Here we have 6 host facing PCIe expansion slots, we have different options from dual or quad fiber channel or ethernet cards to storage class memory or SCM. Talking about SCM, yes HP Electra supports SCM, namely Intel Optane for those who need the most insane performance. There's also 4 fixed 1 GB base T ports and 2 USB ports at the bottom. HP Electra 6050 supports 2 expansion shelves for more storage capacity. OCP expansion slots for the expansion shelves are located here. As for power, depending on the model you can use 800 watts or 1600 watt power supplies. This bad boy is populated with 2 1600 watt monster PDUs per node. That's a 6.4 kilowatts total in 4 rack units. My sauna heater is rated about the same. <laughs> a node is easy to remove from the chassis by just unscrewing these two screws from the back and pulling the node backwards. Internals are equally impressive. These Electra 6050 nodes are powered by 2x AMD EPIC processors with 16 cores each. That makes a total of 64 cores in both nodes of Electra 6050. 
The highest end Allegro 6090 sports 64 cores per processor, a whopping 256 cores in the whole system. In between the memory DIMMs, there is a special NVDIMM module. This flash and supercapacitor backed NVDIMM acts as a write buffer, so all incoming writes are always going through this NVDIMM. In normal operation, NVDIMM looks and behaves just like standard RDIMM, caching data in those DRAM chips, but in case node loses power, all data that's stored in the DRAM chips will be moved to the NAND flash chip, and those supercaps are providing power to the NAND chips. To keep all this cool, there is a row of six high-performance fan units in the front of the nodes. As always, the fans are easily replaceable. I mentioned earlier that the Electro 6000 is based on nimble storage, but everything is faster. So here's one proof of that. I'm not usually the biggest fan of synthetic performance tests, but you gotta compare these systems somehow, and sub HANA tests seem to be enjoying high industry acceptance for testing real-life storage performance under heavy stress. It measures the number of sub HANA nodes that the array can steadily sustain for a period of time under high load. So here's a chart of sub HANA performance test comparing Nimble Storage to HP Electro 6000. And as we can see from this chart, Electro 6050 is 50% faster than the highest end Nimble Storage AF80. And Electro 6090 is destroying not only all Nimble Storage arrays, but even all other Electro 6000 arrays by performing 125% better than 6050 in a sub HANA test. That is insane. Another impressive angle about Aletra is the way it's managed. For the first time with HP storage, management is 100% cloud-based. There's still ways to locally manage individual Aletra arrays, but the day-to-day -day management is designed to be done from Data Services Cloud Console, or DSCC. The second part of this two-part video series will be all about DSCC, so I will not spend too much time talking about that now. But I just want to say that while DSCC is still far away from its full potential, it's yet another proof of HP executing strongly on its vision of becoming a true cloud company. And talking about HP's future vision, I want to take that a notch or two further. No doubt HP Allegra is a capable storage array. In fact, the most modern and feature-rich storage array in HP's portfolio, and that alone is saying a lot. But to be completely honest with you, it's not the IOPSIs, milliseconds, gigabytes or new features, not even the cloud management that fascinates me most about Aletra. What I am most excited about HP Aletra is that it is playing an important part in the bigger HP vision. And that vision has cloud written all over it. Everything HP does these days seems to have something to do with their cloud offering, namely HP GreenLake. And Aletra is no exception. Aletra is 100% cloud managed through Data Services Cloud Console, which is accessed through GreenLake Portal, among the other cloud consoles, Compute Cloud Console and Aruba Central. Firmware and software updates are delivered remotely from the cloud, not through a local interface anymore. New features are being added to the cloud console automatically, etc. etc. But something got stuck in the back of my mind from this year's HP Discover event, HP Lighthouse. So what is HP Lighthouse? Thanks for asking. One thing a public cloud does incredibly well is scaling. This high level of scalability is only possible if the whole infrastructure is super standardized. Let's imagine a standardized public cloud building block comprising of compute, storage and networking capacity. Let's further imagine that every time more capacity is needed, capacity requirements for compute, storage and networking is exactly as much as one of those building blocks can provide. This would be ideal situation as, of course, not reality, but a goal nevertheless. Now, you would only need to build these standard building blocks and add them to the existing infrastructure and off you go. And that's what hyperscalers are doing in their data centers. They are using the exact same concept when they are bringing public cloud to customers' on-prem environments. AWS calls these on-prem building blocks outposts, Microsoft has Azure Stack Hub, Google has Anthos and IBM has IBM Cloud Satellites. And HP has, yep, HP GreenLake Lighthouse. 
That's right, at the concept level, HP Lighthouse is the same as AWS Outposts. Lighthouse comprises of HP's greatest hits like ProLiant servers, Aruba networking, Aletra storage, Esmeral software, and Zero Trust Security with Project Aurora. But all that is hidden under the hood. We didn't hear Antonio Neri mention any of those in his keynotes, and that's because with Lighthouse, details don't matter. You can choose to go for good, better, or best performance, and have some, more, or maximum amount of capacity. Of course, performance and capacity need to be indicated with numbers, but at the end of the day, from business point of view, it is irrelevant if that capacity and performance is delivered with Primera, 3PAR, Aletra, MSA, Fiber Channel or FCOE, spinning drives, SSDs, none of that matters, as long as your business requirements are met, right? To me, Lighthouse is yet another strong proof of HP executing on its vision of truly trying to offer simple-to-use business-centric computing to the customers where details don't matter, only meeting SLAs and overall user experience matters. Exactly what AWS, Azure, Google and other hyperscalers have been doing for well over a decade. I've said it many times before and I will say it again. Traditional infrastructure vendors like HPE should try to openly copy all the business and operating modes that Public Cloud is using. That is a message and vision I would invest in. That's it about Aletra this time, but the story is far from over. I left the most interesting parts for the next video where I will talk about Data Services Cloud Console, a HPE first cloud-based lifecycle management for data and storage. That video will come out soon after this, so remember to subscribe and hit the bell button to be reminded about it and the other videos. Cheers and see you shortly.